Hi, good morning. Uh, nice to see you guys again. I hope all is well. Uh, thank you so much for making it to my Pilates class. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. So in the previous few days, what we've been doing is starting off with kind of like neck stretches. Um, I think we did a little bit of shoulder um, stretches the other day. So today I wanna start off in a different way. And we're actually gonna start off with some leg stretches and then work our way up. Okay, just so our classes aren't repetitive, okay? All right, so what we're gonna do here is actually start into a hands and knees position. Now from here, I want you guys to arch your back and bring it up and down as much as you can. Take a deep breath. And exhale. Good. Deep breath. try to do is act like you're pressing your arm into the ground. Good. Deep breath. Great job. We're going to come back up and we're going to switch sides. charge of lifting your leg and swinging it forward. So what we're going to do here is I want you guys to hold your hips and think of your hips like a bottle or no, a bucket of water. And so if that bucket of water is completely filled with water, if you tilt it too far forward, so we're tilting our hips back, our water is filling, okay? Now if you tilt your hips too far forward, your, or yeah, your, the water is filling backwards, okay? So too far back, it's filling forward, too far forward back. We want to go into a neutral position, okay? But a lot of the times we're not as aware of how our hips are positioned during the day. So it just helps to do these little hip tilts to kind of give us a, um, an idea of what the positioning of our hips is. Now for a stretch, what I want you guys to do is actually lean forward. But as we do that, I want you guys to tilt to your hip forward, squeeze your glutes, 
tight, okay? Now brace yourself by squeezing your core, all right? And even in this position, I'm already starting to feel my hip flexor, okay? And now what we're gonna do is lean forward just a little bit. You should be able to feel a nice stretch in the hip flexor. Take a deep breath and exhale. Deep breath, inhale. And exhale, great job. Keep going, inhale. And exhale. Awesome, awesome. One more. Relax. Good. Okay, while we're here, we're not going to waste this position. We're actually going to stretch your hamstrings. So I want you to move forward now. too far forward, our water's filling out back here. So you want to even those hips up. So go back, forward, neutral, okay? Now this is position we want to be in when we're like standing, okay? But for a good stretch for the hip flexor, I want you guys to tilt it forward, good. Take a deep breath, inhale. Squeeze your glute and your core. And now we're gonna lean forward, okay? Go ahead and start leaning forward just a little bit. Just enough to feel your hip flexor stretch. Deep breath, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Go ahead, inhale. Exhale. Great job, almost there, inhale. All right, now what I want you guys to do, we're not wasting this stretch, so we're gonna go into our hamstring stretch. Straighten out that leg. I don't wanna see any bend in the knee, good. We're gonna lean forward, stretching out that hamstring. You should feel it in the back of the leg here. Good. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, exhale, one more, and exhale, good. All right, now that we've got our hip flexor stretch and our hamstring stretch, we're gonna go into some inner thigh stretches, okay? And then from there, we'll do our, um, what are they called, hip openers or pigeon pose, and then go into a quadricep stretch and then get started with some core exercises. So what I'm gonna do is take myself to one edge of my mat. Okay, I'm gonna go on my knees and bring one leg out as far as I can. Good, you should be getting a nice inner thigh stretch. And then what I like about this one is that you are on the knees, but you are getting a nice inner thigh stretch on your left side, well this is my left side. And it's not too difficult to get into if um, you don't have any uncomfortability with your knees. If um, being on the knees is a little too much for you, what you can also do is be in a seated position and have this leg straight and just kind of like lean forward as this leg goes out. Deep breath here. It's important to remember with any type of stretch that we wanna make sure that we're not bouncing into it, that you're taking deep breaths holding the pose, and then if you need to relax at any point in time, that you slowly bring it back in. Okay, now we're gonna switch sides. I'm gonna go to the opposite end of my mat. Come on the knees, my leg out to the side, and I'm sliding out. Only as far as I feel comfortable. Good. Deep breath while you're here. Good. All right. 
If either of those stretches did not work for you because you have knee issues, don't worry about it. There's another one that we can do. It's called our um, butterfly stretch. So with the butterfly stretch, um, you bring your feet together, bring it close to your body. What we're gonna do is lean forward. As we lean forward, you're pressing your elbows into your legs, okay? Take a deep breath. And lean forward, good. stretch all you would do is put your hands on your knees as you lean forward good inhale One way to put ourselves in a position to do that is to bring the knee straight down and pull our heel into our glute or higher up if we can, okay? And that gets you a really nice quadricep stretch, one where you don't feel that you have to hop around on one foot when you're standing. Good. And if laying down is not an option for you, you can also do the same stretch in a chair. Take a deep breath. Inhale. And exhale. Great job, one more inhale. And exhale. I'm gonna turn around and do my opposite side. So it's the same thing. I have one hand behind my head, one hand underneath me holding the head. Now with my opposite arm, I'm holding onto the ankle. Try to pull my foot into my glute or my back. Remember, you don't want your knee to head forward, you want it to go straight down. Good. Take a deep breath, inhale. Exhale.
back now. So, while we're here on our back now, what I want to do is to warm up our core. Um, but before we get started with our core exercises, again, I just want to remind you guys that you, when we do our core exercises, you want to keep your belly button pressed into your spine and to the floor. So you want to keep your belly button pressed into the floor. One way we do that is you're going to arch your hips. So I want you guys to do a pelvic tilt. So this is our pelvis here. What I want you guys to do is tilt it forward and drop it down. Tilt it forward and drop it down. So I'm not lifting my hips up, I'm just tilting up, tilting down, okay? Now if I keep my hips tilted up just a little bit, what I'm allowing my spine to do is press my mid back into the floor, okay? Because if you are relaxing your hips, relax them for me really quick. Check underneath your back with one hand. You should feel a, a lifted spot where you can place your hand. Okay, now what we want to get, do, what we want to do with that is to eliminate that gap. So to do that again, tilt the hips. And what we're doing is we're gonna come up off our shoulder blades for a crunch, okay? But as we do this, please do not lean with your head, okay? Um, our bodies or our brains are so smart. Uh, one way that we're programmed is to go whichever direction kind of meet lead with our head, but, you know, tilting, bring it forward, but for crunches, we want to move our body as a unit, not just leaning solely by the head, but that causes this next strain. So I want you guys to keep your head kind of tucked in, okay? You don't need to necessarily tuck your chin into your chest, but just keep it back. You don't want to lead with your head, you don't want to extend it. So we're going to come up off our shoulder blades. So what I want you guys to do with your hands is go ahead and just cross those shoulders. We're going to come up for five. So tilt those hips. Tighten the core, and come on up. One, two, three, four. Good job. Five. Good. Super simple. Good. Take a deep breath. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Now I want you guys to go with your arms. Reach up towards the ceiling. Now we're going to come up off of our shoulder blades here. Reaching for the ceiling and go one, two, three, four, good, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. So we're just getting our body used to coming up off the shoulder blades. Um, that's going to be a constant thing that I ask for you guys when we do the core exercise, any part where we have to come up off the upper body. If you can't do a full sit up, I'm okay with that. Just as long as you're trying to make the effort to come up off of your shoulder blades. And I will show you modifications throughout the class to be able to go all the way up. And we're gonna be focusing more on the way down and slowing that motion, okay? Now, the next one we're gonna do here is our cross crunch, okay? We're doing it a little differently today, so when, I want you guys to actually bring your arms up to the ceiling, and we're gonna try and bring our elbow as close as we can to opposite arm. Okay, so one, and two, and good, three, and four, and making those lower abdominals work for us. Good, keep going, we're almost there. One more. And relax. Good. So, what any type of twisting mo movement does for you while we do these core exercises is it starts to engage your obliques. Okay? So, just that twisting, we're using those obliques. Right, we're going to do another one for the obliques. You can do it through either the low body or the upper body. Our next one is called your ab shimmies. Now for those, you want to have your feet about um, hip width apart. You're going to come up off of your shoulder blades. And this is how we're going to remain throughout the rest of this movement. Arms to your sides. And we're going to try and reach our hand to our heel. You do not physically have to touch it. Just aim for it. And I want you guys to lean side to side as we do this, but again, 
keeping your core engaged by staying up off of your shoulder blades. Ready? And go. One, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight, and nine, and ten, and relax. Take a deep breath, inhale. shimmy with our feet down. Okay, it's a whole other story if our legs are up. And I'll go over that in a second. But before we do, our next one will actually be with the lower body. So I want you guys for a second, I'm going to give no instructions other than lift your feet up and drop one leg down, lift it up, drop one leg down, lift it up. Now bring both feet down and lift them both up. Good? Okay. So if you guys felt that movement more in your hip flexors than your core, then you weren't pressing your the mid back into the floor. So instead of using only your hip flexors, because a lot of the time since we lead sedentary lives, again that means sitting down a lot, um, our hip flexors tend tend to shorten just a little bit. Um, and what that causes is it's not as strong when we want to like lift our legs up here. So, uh, and plus we don't want to strain our hip flexors with that movement. Uh, we want to use our core. We're going to help use our core to brace ourselves to come up and down. So engage your core here. Come up off your shoulder blades. We're going to lift up both legs and drop them both down. Ready? Lift up and drop down. And relax. So if that was exponentially easier than the last time, then, um, I mean, good. We still want to strengthen our hip flexors, but this isn't, we want to work our core for right now, okay? And I'll show you some later for our hip flexors, okay? So, again, starting off with that cradle-like position here, coming up off the shoulder blades, and then lift the legs up and drop down. Now, what we're going to do, because we're not going to do both legs just yet, we're going to do one at a time. These ones are called your heel taps, okay? So, if you have low back problems, you want to put your hands in that triangle position underneath your hips. Okay, so just right underneath there. And what that does is it helps your low back be able to deal with the movement. Okay, take a deep breath, inhale, and up. So we're gonna go one and two and three. Good job. And four and five and six. Those were our heel taps. And next is our leg raises. We're gonna go both legs together. So ready, take a deep breath, inhale. And go one, drop down. Two, drop down. Good, three, drop down. Four, drop down. Five, drop down. Six, drop down. Seven, drop down. Eight, Drop down, nine, drop down, ten. Good job. Deep breath. Deep breath. Good job. Great, great, great. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go into a um, a V sit, so this is your, your our V shape. We're gonna come up into a seated position first. So whichever way you need to do that, go for it. Okay. Now with our V sit, all we're doing is we're gonna lean back, and you're making a V shape with your body. That's literally all it is. 
um, but you do have some modifications. So we can lift up the legs and keep our upper body up. Hands up, hands down, hands up, feet down. It's up to you which position you want to do depending on if you have um, low back issues, um, you feel like your balance isn't there. If your tailbone's really starting to bug you on this one, go on to your forearms and then do the movement from there, okay? All right, so what we're gonna do here in our V-sit position is we're actually gonna lean back, try and keep those feet up, and what we're gonna do is open the arms out to the side. Open and two, three, four, five, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now we're gonna go with the legs. So I can keep my hands down if I want for my balance, but remember, I'm not putting my full weight on there. I should just barely be holding it. We're gonna extend the legs out and away. Ready? Go one. hand to knee, okay? Or elbow to knee. Ready? And go. position okay you can bring yourself onto your forearms okay ready inhale and exhale go flare kick one two three four five six seven eight nine ten Woo. now we're gonna get ready to go into a scissor so your legs are going to open and cross over. We're going to do one each direction. So one and two. And we're going to go for ten. Ready? Inhale. And exhale. Go. One and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and ten and Bend those knees for me. Okay. Now what we're gonna do here is actually go into a sit up. So remember, if you can't go into a sit up, as long as you come up off your shoulder blades, I'm fine with that. If you really just want to get up in that seated position, um, one way we can do that is by using those arms for momentum. We can also use our elbows by pressing them into the floor. You can also use leg. Um, but again, these are just beginner, beginner modifications. Eventually, you should be able to come up off of your back by yourself without any type of assistance except for the foot. Okay? Um, but the point of even coming up in the first place is to work on our negative, so to work on the way down. If we get our body used to that motion of going down, you're going to feel your core start to engage. We're going to, uh, you know, enlist the help of our muscle memory. 
um, moving forward, maybe not today, maybe next time that we do quads, of being able to come up on our own, using those core muscles that we were unfamiliar with, um, that we're getting to know today, okay? So come up into a seated position, whichever way you can, up off the shoulder blades, try and come all the way up into a seated position, and all the way down, go nice and slow. Slow, 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 bring it down, one vertebrae at a time. And then go back up. And back. You can bring your hand across the chest if you want to make it harder. Come on, up. And down slow. Up. This is three. And up. Good job, we got one more. Ten. Down, slow. Good job. Deep breath, inhale. And exhale. Awesome. Our next one, we're gonna reach up to the ceiling. This time I want you guys to actually bring your legs up to the ceiling as well. Straighten them out. Hands up. Then we're gonna come up off of our shoulder blades, reaching for our toes. Ready? And go. One, two, three, four, five, six, come on, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good job. Inhale. Call our ab chops, or I really like to call them our ab chops. So you're gonna go with both hands. We're gonna go left, right, and through the middle. I really like this one because we're doing like a basic crunch, but you're adding rotation to it. Okay, so actually bend your knees for me. Feet about hip width apart. We're gonna go to the left of our legs, to the right, and middle. We're gonna stay up and add those twists while we do this as well. So we're gonna come up through the middle, go left, and right, then bring yourself down, middle, left, and right, bring yourself down. So that was two for me already, we're gonna go for 10. Ready, and go again. This is three, left, good. Four, left, and five. The next one that we're going to do here is going to be again for the oblique. So we're going to do a um, ab shimmy. I told you guys earlier we're going to do it with the legs up. Okay, so when our feet are down on the ground, they kind of give this this anchor point. Okay, but now we're getting rid of that. So what I want you guys to do is try your best not to wiggle the legs around everywhere. Keep them where they are. You're going to come up off of your shoulder blades, hands to your side, and go side to side. One hand, two and without moving the legs. Ready? Go. Three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and ten and relax. Good. Inhale and exhale. Now the next 
what we're doing is a double leg circle. Okay, so you want to use both feet, both legs together. We're going to come up into the chest. We're going to go to the right. Extend it down. Go over to your left now. Into the chest, right, down. It's two. Three. Four. Five. All right. Now I want to reverse. I want to go the opposite way around. Ready? This is the beginning of six. Seven. Eight. Good. Nine. Now we're going to take it onto our stomach. Let your body settle in for a second. One of the worst things that we can do during um, exercise is hold our breath, okay? Especially in strenuous positions, um, sometimes it can cause you to faint. All right, I know we're so close to the floor already, so if we fall, it's not the end of the world. Uh, just again, just be mindful, take care of yourself. Um, you don't want to put yourself in that position when you faint. Okay, not fun, trust me. <laughs> All right, 
So our next one, we're gonna do something very similar. So instead of going forward and back, we're gonna go to the side. So we're gonna bring the knee out into a hydrant position. My arm is gonna go out to my side, okay? We're gonna do this for 10, and then we will do the same thing, hold each side for 30 seconds, all right? So prepare yourself. Hands and knees, you wanna have your hands directly underneath the shoulders, knees directly underneath the hips, and go. One, two, three, four, five, six, good, seven, eight, nine, second half. Good. Now what I want you guys to do is take it to your side. So 
on her side. This next one that we're gonna do is called your mermaid reaches. So I'm bringing my arm up, I'm gonna reach for my toes, my legs gonna be straight, meeting my hand up in the middle here. Ready? And go. One, get as close as you can, they don't have to touch. Two, three, four, five, you got it. Six, seven, Switch your side. Whew. So again, mermaid reaches. Arm up, and then go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. instructors uh, so the way I count is I go one two three four five six seven eight nine one seven eight nine two and I just kind of keep going with that pattern we're gonna go for a hundred now with your arms when we do the um, our 100 they do a flapping motion up and down as fast as we can what that does is helps um, to stabilize the core and use you or force you to use your core just that much more okay so we're gonna take it down onto our back. Your knees are gonna be bent. While we're in this position, your hands are gonna to be to your sides, up off the shoulder blades, and you're going here, okay? Some modifications are, if you have neck issues, one hand behind the head while you move one arm. If you wanna make the movement harder on yourself, legs away from you or lower, okay? Really depends on how you feel. Take a deep breath. And Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And relax. Great job. Straighten those legs out. Arms up above the head. Hands up towards the ceiling. Good. Hands above the thighs. What I want you to do is come up off of your shoulder blades. We're gonna go for three, just a little bit. One, two, three. While we're here, hands behind the head. Pull the chin into the chest. What you guys do is use your shoulder blades to walk up off on the mat, elongating your spine. And relax your head down. Relax those arms and sides. Next deep breath. Tighten up your toes. I want you guys to squeeze everything. Okay, so I'm tightening my toes, calves, quads, cheeks, my glutes, you know, 
uh, stomach, all of my core, my back, my chest, my arms, tighten everything up, squeeze everything, squeeze the face, make a funny sour face, hold it, take it, take it, hold it, deep breath, inhale, and relax, let it go of everything. Got a lot of our um, leg stretches done. So before we leave, I'm not gonna leave you hanging. I want you guys to do some neck stretches, some shoulder stretches. So the way we do our neck stretches is you have four of them. So you're gonna go to the side. Right now, I even just heard a crack in my neck. Awesome, getting it moving. Pulling my ear into my shoulder. Now, what a lot of people do on this one is they actually lift up their other shoulder. I want you guys to keep that guy down. Good. Take a deep breath, inhale, and exhale. You hold those stretches as long as you feel comfortable. We're doing our opposite side now. Again, don't lift up the shoulder, push it down. the back corner of your neck and that's where a lot of us hold this tension from typing all day okay same thing on the opposite side Go 
open the chest. Hands back behind you, interlocking those fingers. Great job. Last but not least, go ahead and bring your hands together. I want you guys to remember an acronym, um, SHAPE, which stands for Superior Health and Positive Energy. Remember, believe it and achieve it. Doubt it. Namaste. Thank you so much for staying with me. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you guys have any things that you want to work on, um, body-wise, like, oh, I want to work on back more, this, that, the other, go ahead and leave it, leave it in the comments section, and I'll add that for our next video. If you guys want to focus more on stretches, same thing. Go ahead and let me know which stretches, and for the next one, we'll post it up. Uh, remember, this class is not for me, it's your class, okay? So go ahead and leave me as many notes as you like. I'm here, I'm reading them, okay? So I hope to see you guys soon. Have a great day and stay healthy, especially during this shelter in place, this quarantine. And hopefully we can all be together soon when uh, this is over. But right now, we need to be grateful for the things we have and I'm grateful for being able to teach you even from a distance. Remember to comment, like, subscribe for more videos.